but they moved away, and over time, you lost touch with them. So she wrote to and said, hey, I want to meet up with you. I'm coming back for a visit, so you're excited. And so you meet up, and you get together, and it's great. You get caught up in each other's lives, and you reminisce about the past and some of the bad things you used to do together, and you have some good laughs. And it's going great, and you're enjoying it, but all of a sudden, your friend pulls out a bag, reaches in, and takes out a book, and looks at you and goes, I'm sorry, but this book is so good, I can't put it down. So just give me a few minutes. And they start reading the book, and you're just waiting. How would you feel if one of your friends did that to you? Interesting. I would be hurt a little bit. I would think, I guess I'm not very important to them at all. Now, how would you, what would you think about someone who would do that to you? I would think they're pretty weird. I would think, how can you be so self-absorbed that you'd want to do that instead of talk to me? Now let me ask you this question. If it's wrong to stop and read a book when you're with someone, why is it okay to stop and answer a phone? Or check for messages, or whatever? Why? Why is that okay? Fellow Toastmasters and dear guests, put away your phones and be fully present when you're with people. Now, my guess would be some of you are actually thinking right now, come on, William. Picking up and answering your phone is not the same thing as stopping to read a book. Well, you may think that, but you would be wrong. Okay? You'd be very wrong. Not just a little bit, but very, very, very wrong. How can I say that? Because it has been discovered through scientific research that if you have a phone present at all, anywhere, it has a negative effect on the interaction and intimacy between people. It doesn't have to ring or be picked up or anything. Just the mere presence of a phone has a negative impact. They also discovered through research that the more digitally connected people become, the less connected they become to the people around them. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? We're connected, but we're less connected. But that's the way it is. And I don't know about you, but I've been observing this stuff for over six years. I didn't need to read this research to know that this is true. When I see people get together in a big group, and they hardly talk to each other because they're all on their phones, I just shake my head. Have you seen that before? I, I just go, this is not good. This is not good at all. You know what's happening? We're allowing our phones to make us the center of our own little, lonely universe. A very little and lonely universe. So I urge you strongly, put away your phones out of sight, out of mind, and be fully present. What exactly does it mean to be fully present? It means to live in the moment, to drink in life as it happens. It also means to make the real world a priority over the digital world. Let me give you an example, just to help you better understand this. Say there's a beautiful fireworks display going on. Now, I can be fully present. I can take in the sights, the sounds, the smells, everything connected with the fireworks, even the oohs and ahs of everybody around me. Or I can take out my phone, and I can video the thing and watch it through my phone, or take some photos and then post them on Facebook. And then I can send a few text messages to friends and say, this is the greatest fireworks I've ever seen. But in doing that, you miss out on the experience of the fireworks. Correct? When, when it comes to people, being fully present means to give them your full attention. That your heart and your focus is on them and not on things like phones. Okay? Here, I have a few suggestions for you in order for you to be more fully present. So I'd ask that you would consider these and maybe some of you are doing them, and maybe you have even better ideas. First of all, before you meet up with people, try to take care of all your phone calls ahead of time. Right? That means you're going to have to get in the habit of thinking ahead instead of waiting until the last minute. Two, make sure, or 
make sure you, if you have a smartphone that you learn to use the Do Not Disturb app. And if you don't have a Do Not Disturb app, then get one for it. And if you don't have a smartphone, practice using your silence. Silence the phone. Or if you're always tempted to look at your phone, turn it off. All right? Then for another suggestion is, though, that before you meet up with people, turn on the Do Not Disturb app or turn it off, before you meet up with them, why? Because remember, if a phone is seen, it has a negative impact. So get rid of your phone before you meet up. In closing, I have a few thoughts to leave you. Just because you can do something does not mean it is wise to do so. Let me repeat that. Think about this. Just because you can do something does not mean it is wise to do so. If you use your phone unwisely, foolishly, it will begin to control you and have a negative impact on your relationships. But if you learn to use your phone wisely, it will enrich your life and your relationships. The choice is yours. Finally, remember, when it comes to priorities, people are way, way, way more important than what's on our phones. So, would make it your goal, whenever you're with people, to be fully present. Mr. Toastmaster? And now I kindly ask you to write the feedback for William. This is timer. One minute, please.